Borisova, and I'm with the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, uh, and I will be your on-site moderator uh, for this one-hour-long session, alongside uh, my colleague, the director, co-director of the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, David Van Duren. Uh, he, his task is to, is to make sure uh, that we involve our online participants in this session as much as possible. For the modus operandi of this session, uh, we will uh, want to make it interactive. We have to make it interactive, uh, actually, because this is what the IGF is about. So the way how you can um, jump in uh, the session uh, at any time is, of course, for those of you in the room, it will be easier. Just give me a sign. Uh, for those of you uh, joining us online, uh, kindly raise your uh, virtual hand or uh, let uh, uh, David know uh, and he will make sure uh, to jump in and bring your inputs uh, as well. Uh, the topic of today's open forum is to dis discuss GC3B. And please do not be <laughs> puzzled uh, and confused already. It is quite a uh, complicated uh, acronym on first sight, but it has some meaning uh, behind that. And the meaning is that the GC3B uh, stands for the Global Conference on Cyber Capacity Building. And there are three Cs, thus three Cs, uh, three, three CBs. Uh, now, uh, this is a major event uh, that has been in the kitchen of the GFC and several partners uh, for quite some time. And the main aim or objective uh, for this global event is to see how we can explore uh, the connections and synergies between the cyber community on one hand and the development community on the other hand. And I have several colleagues uh, here with us in the room and online uh, that will tell us more, that will guide us through. And uh, at, towards the end of the session, we would like to hear from you, because as this conference is quite a lot in the shaping still in the preparation phase, you will have the opportunity uh, to help us shape it so that it answers uh, what the community is craving. On that note, uh, one last point that I will stress, that the conference, as the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, will be very multi-stakeholder, and we are interested in inputs by governments, civil society, technical community, private sector, academia. So to briefly share with you who we have with us uh, at this session. We have with us, on my left, uh, the president of the GFC uh, Foundation Board, uh, Christopher Painter. Uh, also with us in the room, uh, do we have, and now give me a second, Teonesten Giruvansanga, <laughs> who is the project manager at uh, Smart Africa, responsible for uh, cybersecurity and data privacy. We also have with us Dr. Tovela Nirienda Jere, uh, who is the head of the economic integration uh, division at Auda Nepat. Uh, uh, good morning, Tovela. And we also have with us Francesca Bosco, who is the senior advisor at the CPI, the Cyber Peace Institute uh, based in Geneva. I would first like to give the floor to you, Chris, uh, to basically share with us on the, some of the whys. Why are we doing the conference? What should be the objectives and outcomes? Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. And, and let me just say uh, welcome to all of you both online and here. As Teresa said, that you know, one of the reasons we wanted to do this open forum at the IGF was to really garner input from this community about how, uh, you know, what kinds of things this conference should do, what kinds of things it should contain, because it's very important to consult with lots of different stakeholders, and this is a prime opportunity to do it. So thank you for coming. Uh, as Teresa said, my name is Chris Painter. I'm the president of the GFC Foundation. Uh, and, you know, much has been done, as you know, to promote best practices in cyber capacity building, including by the GSC. But there's insufficient awareness among key decision makers and a lack of resources and coordination that sometimes hinders out implementation. And, and, you know, I think another thing that Teresa also hit on that I think that I've noticed and I've seen over the years I've done this both when I was in the U.S. government and in this role now is that, you know, there's lots of different divisions uh, in the world. You know, there's divisions between the technical community and the policy community, as I said yesterday on a panel. There's divisions between the economic folks and the security folks. But there's a big division between the traditional development people and the cybersecurity capacity building people. They're all, their own little communities. There's a little crossover, and it's getting a little better, but they don't really talk to each other or coordinate enough. So that's something that I think needs to be addressed as well. So 
in recognition of that, in recognition of the need, of the need to elevate this issue, uh, we partnered with the Cyber Peace Institute, who you'll hear from, the World Bank, the World Economic Forum, and together uh, we, have, uh, we are working on convening the Global Conference on Cyber Capacity Building, the GC3B, uh, which falls trippling off your tongue, as uh, Teresa said, uh, to advance, operationalize, and collaborate on cyber capacity building. The conference will be a key gathering of decision makers from government, business, finance, academia, and international civil society. And key is not just the cyber community, but also the development community together. And I think that's really important. The need for cyber capacity building is a key enabler of sustainable and resilient digital development will be highlighted, reflecting the key theme of the conference for 2023, which is cyber resilience for development. And I should say one of the reasons we chose that term resilience is that has resonance both with the development community and the uh, security community. You talk about security and the development community gets a little afraid. You talk about resilience, people understand what you're talking about. And I think that that's helpful. Um, the GC3B aims to elevate and mainstream cyber resilience and capacity building as a first order strategic and operational priority in international cooperation and development. In addition to that, the conference aims to support middle and low income countries in incorporating cybersecurity and cyber resilience into their national strategic plans, including their digital infrastructure and strategies and investments. And again, that's important to cross over between that economic uh, digital transformation agenda and the security agenda. In order to achieve these objectives, the conference strives to achieve several concrete outcomes. And we want to hear from you about these, but also anything else you'd suggest. The first of those outcomes is a high-level, demand-driven, global cyber capacity building agenda for cyber resilient international development that serves the needs and priorities of the global South countries. And we already have the Africa uh, cyber uh, capacity building agenda underway. Uh, it was discussed yesterday at the GFC Africa regional meeting, uh, which took place here in the margins of the IGF, so yesterday afternoon. So that's already being done. And in many ways, I think that will serve a model for, for the, other, uh, the other regions. Uh, next, uh, the uh, uh, Global Conference on, on well, the Global Conference, I'll call it the Global Conference, that makes it easier for people, strives to achieve a significant expansion of the pool of resources available for equitable and sustainable capacity building, cyber capacity building, through the mobilization of different sources of financing from international development, the private sector, and philanthropy. The conference will help formulate an improved global architecture of coordination and cooperation mechanisms for cyber capacity building by leveraging existing structures and strengthening global, regional, multi-stakeholder, and public-private cooperation initiatives. The conference will also provide a platform for developing countries to shape cyber capacity building initiatives and define and incorporate and the incorporation of cyber resilience in the broader development agenda in line with their perspectives, needs, and lessons. And th this also ties in with one of the things that GFC has shifted to over the last couple of years, which is a demand-driven approach from countries rather than simply saying, hey, we'll give you this, uh, which doesn't help them as much as asking them first what they need. Um, the, we're going to have regionally targeted, um, well, the outcomes and objectives I just mentioned will frame the program for the conference, but they also underscore this is a demand-driven, as I said, globally-owned initiative, not just a top-down initiative. The conference will include regionally targeted and sector-specific debates to promote context-sensitive and demand-driven exchanges and commitments. It is really important for us to get your feedback, as I said at the top of my uh, uh, remarks here, and input, and that's really why we're here today. So we want to hear from you. Please. Don't be shy about expressing your opinion. You can also talk to us afterwards. You can also send us emails afterwards. There's lots of ways you can communicate. So with that, let me uh, give it back to Teresa. Uh, Chris, uh, thank you very much for that. That was a very useful kind of context uh, of the why, uh, why we feel uh, that this conference is needed. And you also hinted to the fact that you know, crossing the silos is not always uh, easy and comfortable, uh, but we feel that it's missing because cyber and development are so much connected. And so having you with us, you know, you actually are one of the few people that, that know the connection because that, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of your, uh, your work. So why do we need to talk more about cyber resilience for development first? And second, uh, Chris mentioned it, uh, stressed again the multi-stakeholder nature of the conference. Why is that important for this particular connection? Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Therese. Uh, we all know that um, resilience, cyber resilience, requires uh, a deeper understanding uh, of hazards and uh, risks at uh, community and uh, region levels. So all, co all countries, especially developing countries, uh, need to bake in um, resilience into their uh, critical systems and functions. And uh, because uh, cyber resilience is uh, increasingly becoming uh, a competitiveness uh, issue, as you all know, people will always choose to invest and live in uh, uh, at communities that are resilient and gravitate or run away from those that are not. So countries should be uh, supported to have uh, the ability to prepare for uh, and to adapt to changing conditions uh, and uh, disruptions. And they should be uh, able to withstand and to recover rapidly from uh, attacks and uh, um, uh, threats. So this is uh, why uh, uh, cyber resilience is very important and uh, uh, for this meeting. So we needed uh, this meeting, this conference, I mean, uh, uh, so that it can uh, put together people, uh, multi-stakeholder approach uh, to, um, to mobilize effective and uh, sustainable and inclusive uh, stewardship of international cooperation uh, for cyber, uh, cyber resilient development and cyber capacity building. So um, as uh, 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 Chris said, uh, the theme uh, of this uh, conference, we focus on the cyber resilience for development as the theme, and the aim uh, is to catalyze uh, the global action to elevate and mainstream uh, cyber resilience and the capacity building in the uh, international uh, uh, development agenda, as well as in national uh, development plans uh, as a key enablers of sustainable development, uh, inclusive economic uh, growth and social uh, prosperity for all. So uh, this is uh, why we need everyone uh, from public sector, private sector, academia, and, and uh, subject matter uh, experts, uh, civil society to get involved in the preparation, not only in the preparation, but also uh, by participating uh, uh, in the conference so that they can share with us uh, uh, their inputs and so that they can be, uh, 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 those inputs can be captured uh, to be uh, put into the recommendations. So I think that's why uh, uh, cyber resilience is important and uh, that's why we needed this uh, conference to take place. So thank you very much. Uh, you were convincing. <laughs> Let's see then what the uh, what others uh, think about whether whether this is the right approach that we have uh, adopted. But uh, staying a little bit in your region, uh, in Africa, uh, I would like to turn uh, to Dr. Tovella, uh, who is joining us online. Uh, and now to give the context of uh, uh, of why uh, Dr. Tovella is so important at this session. One of the aims of the conference, and Theo, you mentioned it uh, very well, you used the term global action on capacity building, uh, besides other themes, is to come up with something that will make a change uh, in uh, the attention that is given uh, to, uh, to cyber capacity building. So the plan that we have at the GFCE uh, is to develop global agenda for cyber capacity building. And because we do need to be very sensitive to the specificities of individual regions, this global agenda should be actually informed by regional agendas. And Africa is one region where I would say we are most advanced in shaping what the Africa regional agenda for capacity building could be. Dr. Tovella, thank you for joining us. Uh, I believe from Brussels. Could you tell us more about this plan and also the process of developing the agenda? Over to you, thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa, and good morning to you and good morning to everyone that's sitting in Addis. I very much wish that I could have been there, but unfortunately um, other commitments um, find me in Brussels at this time. I think that um, as you rightly 
mentioned, and I think as Chris has also mentioned, uh, we're very keen to see an Africa cyber capacity building agenda. Um, and we, we see this as something that um, is important um, in a number of ways. For instance, first of all, I think it helps in terms of um, helping to guide and shape the global discourse on cyber capacity building. But also for us, I think in terms of um, the continent, uh, we are very keen to see that there is a process and an outcome that is really talking to our needs and priorities in so far as cyber capacity building is concerned and linking this very deliberately to our various development aspirations, whether it's at a national, regional or continental level. We also want to make sure that this agenda is um, developed in a very coordinated bottom-up um, multi-stakeholder and inclusive process using established um, regional and continental structures and frameworks, because of course we want to make sure that um, we are not duplicating where duplication is not needed, but we're also identifying very clearly where the gaps, where the needs and where the issues perhaps would lie for an Africa CCD agenda. So we have currently started the process of developing that. There was a discussion document that was drafted, and I think this is what was the focus of the meeting yesterday. Um, and again, in the spirit of it being a very bottom-up process and being very multi-stakeholder, it is being led by the <clears throat> Africa Cyber Capacity Building Coordination Committee. And this is a grouping that represents key institutions that have various interests in terms of the ICT telecommunications cybersecurity space in Africa. So we want to make sure as much as possible that all voices are heard, that everybody has a, a, a chance and an opportunity to participate in shaping this agenda, because ultimately it will be our agenda and it will be our responsibility to see that it is implemented. So in developing the agenda, what we want to be able to do is to really allow us to shape an ecosystem that will allow us to coordinate and identify good policies, practices, and ideas that would shape cyber capacity building on the continent, of course, tying that in to what Chris talked about in terms of a demand driven approach, because we want to make sure that whatever we're shaping, whatever we're building is meeting people where they are. So it has to be demand driven and it has to be something that resonates with the various stakeholder constituencies across the continent. At the same time, um, you know, we also must acknowledge the fact that a lot of the agenda um, is shaped in part by the AUTFC, um, you know, cyber capacity building project that was implemented um, between AUC, AUD and EPAD and the um, GFCE. Um, and that also brought in all the different uh, member states across the continent, along with the various um, institutions in the cyberspace. So what we are now doing is that we have collected the inputs through the, the meeting yesterday. And what we've seen, of course, is that um, there's a number of common themes that are coming out. And again, hope, hoping that this will also shape the discussion we'll have today, but also shape perhaps the way in which we'll approach this going forward. Um, people are very keen to see that there is a whole of society and a whole of government approach to how we do cyber capacity building. They also want to make sure that we're leveraging knowledge that already exists within the various constituencies, knowledge that exists between countries, um, and knowledge that exists in terms of cross-pollination across different sectors. So we know, for instance, that in the finance sector, in the tech sector, that a lot has been done on cybersecurity and cyber capacity building. And the question is, how do we draw on that and make sure that we can develop something that is um, responsive to the needs of the um, entire society? Um, a few things perhaps that have come out as priorities for the agenda. Number one is that um, people would like to see um, um, government um, political willingness being matched, I think, by action. So we know that our governments are committed. We know that in our various um, engagements that we have with governments, they understand what cybersecurity is and, and how important it is. Um, but perhaps we have not translated that into concrete action then in terms of how we develop cyber capacity um, building initiatives on the continent. The second um, theme that came out of the discussions is that there is a need perhaps to really revisit our legal frameworks on cybercrime and capacity building and tie that in, of course, to issues around data protection as well as our um, certs across the continent. Um, a third theme has to do with coordination. Um, Chris also alluded to the fact that um, coordination is needed and for us it is needed at three levels. We need coordination at the national level, we need it at the regional level, and then we need it at the continental and um, also linking that to the international level as well. 
And then lastly, of course, we have to continue looking at the issues around cyber awareness and skills development and making sure that that is fully embedded um, in the strategy. So we will be working to finalize this strategy and um, our expectation is that it will be shared at the GC3B conference, but we would also like to make sure that this is a strategy that is endorsed um, by our AU um, structures so that it can be something that we take forward um, and allow to trickle down um, from the continental to the regional and to the national level as well. Thank you very much, Teresa. Dr. Tovella, thank you, uh, not only for these words, but also uh, actually for your leadership uh, in the process of developing uh, the Africa Regional Agenda. Uh, my colleagues and I cannot wait to update you about the outcomes of the Africa Regional Meeting that we held uh, yesterday for several stakeholders uh, getting more input uh, into uh, the African Regional Agenda. So, uh, so we will definitely connect uh, with others on this very soon. Now, uh, digging in uh, more now into the actual program specificities of the conference, I would like to turn uh, to you, uh, Francesca, uh, joining us from Geneva. Uh, thank you for making time. Uh, could you tell us uh, something more about the pillars of the conference and then zoom in in one particular pillar uh, that we think will be of a special, uh, of special, let's say, importance for the audience here at the IGF? Over to you, Francesca. Thank you so much, Theresa, and uh, good morning from Geneva. I wish uh, I could be there with you all. Uh, so thank you so much for the opportunity to join online and uh, excited to be uh, to be with you. It's a pleasure, as uh, Chris was mentioning, as co-organizer from the Cyber Peace Institute to give you um, a brief overview of the program of the conference. And after hearing from esteemed colleagues about the why, so for example, the needs and gaps and the proposals uh, like uh, the global agenda, we would like to discuss with you the what and how. Um, in consultation with different stakeholders uh, based on literature review and also express the priorities of different communities engaged both in cyber resilience and international development and together with a diverse program advisory team that I would like to thank. Um, uh, the, the proposed uh, uh, conference program is structured around four main pillars, as uh, uh, Theresa was mentioning, uh, with an approach that is going from high-level policy and visions to macro solutions and to tactical solutions. Um, I will uh, give you a brief overview view of the, let's say, first kind of like three pillars that are across the high-level policy visions to macro solutions, and then we will have also a little bit of like a deep dive into the uh, fourth pillar, as, uh, as Teresa was mentioning, on the more um, oper operationalization of uh, solutions, uh, and uh, this is exactly the moment where we would really like to uh, gather inputs from you all. So when it comes to the, um, uh, the main let's say, uh, pillars, uh, and uh, allow me to give you uh, the, the, the titles, but also um, a brief overview of the, of the different uh, sessions and uh, the different approach uh, um, that we have envisaged in the different pillars. So we start from basically making international development a cyber resilient. And this goes back to what Chris was mentioning. So the idea is really to merge, to integrate the two communities well, I would say even more communities, but let's take the broader definition of the cybersecurity, cyber resilience, and the development community. So addressing basically the main aim of the conference in making the case for cybersecurity, cyber resilience, and the cyber capacity building to be mainstreamed into the international development agenda as a core enabler. And this is a key concept. So how we can make cybersecurity and cyber resiliency an enabler for digital, economic, and social development. And uh, thanks so much, Theonesta, to, to mention uh, specifically, for example, the cyber resilience as a competitiveness factor. Um, but then how would we can basically um, secure the digital ecosystem via collaboration? And this is the second pillar that will try to understand how we can scale, for example, public-private collaboration and multi-stakeholder cooperation to address the systemic challenges and vulnerabilities that are critical uh, to securing the digital ecosystem. Um, we have identified kind of like a couple of like very critical areas, uh, like for example, um, the uh, cybersecurity workforce and skills gap and uh, the uh, protection of critical infrastructure and essential services. And 
um, as you as you might see here, um, and and maybe we can go to the to the next slides where we see the 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 different uh, um, type of sessions uh, that uh, that we envisage. You see here um, the let's say high level titles. And uh, we would be uh, available to to discuss with you all uh, potential feedback and also to give you more information about uh, each one of them. But just to guide you through uh, the the different uh, main topics inside the different pillars, and then the third pillar which is the cyber capacity building for the stability and security of the digital environment. In this pillar, we would like to address um, and understand basically the role that cyber capacity building can play in strengthening the links between international security and sustainable development. And clearly, I mean, to contribute to, I mean, the, um, the, the open, secure, stable, accessible, and peaceful information and communication technology environment. Um, this part specifically, the idea is to build on the ongoing work um, that uh, um, uh, at the um, high, um, high level international uh, dimension, like, for example, at the UN and uh, um, other um, uh, agencies and, and processes uh, when it comes to, for example, framework for responsible state behavior and protecting the digital environment, the idea how we can basically match and scale thanks to the expansion of the capacity building effort. Um, allow me to, to dig a little bit deeper into the um in, into the pillar number four, as we as we mentioned at the very beginning, what we call the operationalization solution pillar. It's important because it's a sort of like horizontal foundation of the conference covering all the different themes that. Um, we have identified in the different other pillar and focusing on very tactical and implementable ideas and solutions for and from government officials, program managers, frontline practitioners, really with um, the idea of merging both, again, the broader communities like cybersecurity and development communities and with the multi-stakeholder approach, so from academia, civil society, private sector and government. Uh, I really like when when uh, Tawella before talked about the cross-pollination. This is a practical example of how we can move uh, basically the needle with very concrete um, examples uh, when it comes to the cross-pollination. Um, I, I just would like to, um, to, to explain a little bit more uh, what we envisage for this specific pillar. So as I said at the very beginning, a little bit the what, but also the how. Um, specifically under this pillar, we have identified the four main tracks. One track that is uh, um, that, that we call the Empower Better Program Management for Cyber Capacity Building and Cyber Resilient Development. What we, what we want to focus here is uh, focusing on good practices and methodologies and practical solution when it comes to design, management, and also evaluation of international cooperation projects and programs on cyber issues and also on mainstreaming cyber related dimensions. Here it's very much for practitioners to try to understand the needs, the gaps, but also which are solutions that we've seen working and how we can basically measure them, how we can measure their impact. Um, and then uh, we move to the track that is focusing on um, implementing successful cyber capacity building and cyber resilient uh, development actions. So this track is focused on practical solution and advice for the implementation of actions that strengthen the cyber resilience and increase the cyber capacities. So this will enable the exchanges on how to basically good practices and the do's and don'ts uh, of managing cyber risk and uh, um, implementing effective cybersecurity solutions from the field. Specifically, we would like to understand which are the needs of stakeholders that implement cyber resilience projects on the front line, including, for example, again, um, government officials, uh, international partners, uh, uh, providing training advice, uh, understanding the role of the different other communities. And then um, track C, uh, which is using global public goods for cyber capacity building. Um, I, I would spend just a, a couple of words on this because basically the various communities that are working to improve cybersecurity and cyber resilience from different perspectives have developed a wealth of freely available resources in various formats, tools, 
um, frameworks, uh, um, guides, platforms that then can be considered global public goods in the service of practitioners in the cyber capacity building efforts. Um, this cover a wider uh, range of applications supporting the growth of the development of the entire cybersecurity ecosystem, um, but there's not an existing kind of like a global comprehensive repository. Um, the idea here is really to raise awareness and showcasing such a global public goods. And uh, um, uh, I would like also to, to mention and uh, building upon uh, what Chris was mentioning at the very beginning, there is also another important dimension when we think about the operationalization of cyber capacity building within the development ecosystem, uh, which is the regional dimension. So we also have envisaged a specific track that consists of five regional sessions to discuss how the issues raised during the conference apply locally and to promote and encourage regional coordination. So the five regions identify the Africa, Pacific, Latin America, and Caribbean, Asia, and Middle East. And uh, this will be really like the moment to, to discuss uh, not only, I would say, the, the approach and the dimension, but really which are the concrete actions that are taking place and how we can best coordinate. Uh, why I mentioned also the, um, I mentioned also the how, and, and we can go to the next slides because uh, um, the, um, basically what we are currently working on as a, as a team of co-organizers together with the program advisory team is to understand the criteria and the format for um, opening uh, uh, this uh, track um, as a call for proposal. And uh, we're working both on the criterion format and also on the selection committee that will be established by the 15th of December. Uh, the open call will be launched on the 15th of December and the uh, proposals will can be submitted until the 15th February. And the selection committee will review the proposals and select the uh, session leads by, by March. Uh, the open call will be communicated widely to the global community through, um, I mean, the and you see and you see the logo here, the GC3B uh, website and social media, um, different consultation events like, for example, this one, uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 newsletter of the different partners uh, and uh, co-host uh, uh, social media channels. Um, as we as as co-organizer together with the GFC, the World Bank, and the World Economic Forum, we are looking uh, for for feedback actually uh, from the multi stakeholder community that that you all represent present um, uh, specifically on, on the topics of, uh, of this track. So, Teresa, I hand over the floor to you. Thank you so much for the Thank you, Francesca, uh, for, for diving in. And, you know, what I think became quite evident while you were speaking is that it wasn't a quick slide that you pulled together before the session. This is a result of uh, quite some extensive work um, that has been done by the GFC and all the partners for this conference. And I would like to also thank you and the CPI for, for being, uh, being so active uh, in this process. Um, at this moment, uh, before we get to the other part of the session, I would like to invite you, uh, participants online, uh, on site, uh, to, to jump in uh, with any questions, uh, suggestions, uh, concerns. Just give me a sign. <laughs> Don't be shy. I know it's... Wednesday already of the IGF, but uh, <laughs> okay, you uh, can jump in anytime throughout the session, uh, and uh, please uh, be encouraged uh, not to ask uh, just about the GC3B conference, but also any clarifications and questions you have on the GFC, on the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, uh, its function, uh, and, uh, and work um, uh, more broadly. So at this point, uh, we will try a little online uh, experiment uh, that would uh, uh, be very convenient for anybody who is shy to speak here because we can anonymously, hopefully if it works, uh, contribute online. Uh, and uh, Anna, uh, if I could ask you to kindly uh, share your screen to put up the Mentimeter, uh, I feel a tool uh, that many of you um, uh, are familiar with already and it seems to be working, which is great. Uh, where we will uh, try to get your inputs on um, on some of the, um, let's say, priorities that should fall uh, under Pillar 4 that Francesca so well described to us. Uh, I am aware that it now looks super tiny on the screen, but once you log, in, uh, log it on your devices, it should be bigger, and I will also make sure to read this out. So if I may uh, encourage you, uh, our participants online and on site, to grab a device, uh, either a mobile phone uh, or uh, your computer, uh, go to menti.com. 
And when you're there, oh, we have some quick respondents. <laughs> Whoever it is, congratulations. Uh, and uh, then put the code, uh, which is 8641594. And the first question ask for, asks for your input on empowering better program management for cyber capacity building and cyber resilient development. Uh, and some of the, uh, yes, no, I can see here. Thank you, thank you. And some of, uh, some of the options that we want your input on, what you think uh, are uh, uh, kind of like which four topics should be prioritized, yes? Uh, and in this we have lessons from uh, and for practitioners in mainstreaming cyber resilience into development, planning and implementing cybersecurity and cyber resilience programs that are multi-stakeholder by design, ensuring equality, diversity and inclusion, and last but not least, bringing cyber expertise into development programs. I'll give you a little while uh, to kindly log your uh, answers. Uh, what we are, I think it's always fascinating to watch this life <laughs> as you're making your choice. I also think it's not totally surprising uh, that we have kind of hits for uh, for every uh, every single. Um, let's say, uh, objective uh, or priority, because all of them without the <laughs> discussion are of relevance, but we would just like to feel the temperature a little bit uh, to get, uh, get your inputs, because one of them seems to be uh, going uh, quite, performing very well, and that's actually the last option, uh, bringing cyber expertise into development uh, programs and upskilling, reskilling development staff on cyber issues. Theo. Are you surprised uh, by, by seeing a result like this? Because that can go quite down your alley. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Uh, this is the choice of uh, everyone. So uh, we need to uh, focus and put emphasis on bringing cyber uh, resilience into the development uh, programs uh, uh, on national level, international level, even uh, in uh, 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 RSC uh, regional communities uh, uh, programs and, and, and strategies. So uh, this is what uh, people are suggesting. So I, I, I'm not surprised. Okay, very good. Um, if anybody else would like to comment on your choices, again, the option is always there on the table. But uh, looking at the weakest performer, um, which is, uh, Yes, uh, ensuring equality, diversity, and inclusion in CCD and cyber resilience programs. Um, Francesca, can I jump to you if this surprised you? Uh, thank you so much, Theresa. Well, actually, I think it's... Um, um, I think one of the challenges is also that uh, as a community, and I take it as a sort of like responsibility for us all uh, maybe to better articulate it. Because I think that one of the challenges that we've seen is uh, that uh, um, is uh, this kind of like dimensions uh, are often um, kind of like referred at more as a, as a token or because it's kind of like becoming a sort of like uh, uh, buzzwords to have, uh, for example, the uh, diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. Whilst uh, uh, I think we need to be more kind of like uh, solutions oriented and maybe a way to raise awareness, uh, for example, is to by giving uh, concrete examples. So I think uh, I take it as a sort of like is maybe the less voted one, uh, but it's very interesting and I think it's a good design for us as a community to instead put a spotlight exactly on this topic um, to have a constructive discussion. And so I think a little bit the the weakness is for for us as a community is not to uh, give enough, let's say, examples and meet basically to such an important topic. And the conference can be an opportunity um, for doing so. Uh, thank you, Francesca. And also maybe as you as you alluded to, this should be a given 
yes, uh, this should be an automatic expectation that the conference will be uh, sensitive uh, to, uh, to equality, uh, diversity, uh, and inclusion. Uh, I can say that for the GFC, it is a given. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yes. Now, uh, if we can, Anna, jump on the next question uh, in, uh, in the Mentimeter, so keep your devices uh, warmed up, <laughs> because we are going to look at uh, track B, uh, which is on implementing successful cyber capacity building and cyber resilient development uh, actions. Again, just for everybody's convenience, uh, I will quickly read the, those priorities out. Opportunities and challenges of financing cybersecurity and cyber resilience in developing countries. Cyber fellowship program for small countries. Improving national cyber hygiene. Solutions for closing the cybersecurity skills and workforce gap. Best practices for establishing national C certs and protecting CNI. And various simulations. So feel free to take a little bit of your time. Things are moving. Let's just wait a few seconds longer. Okay, so we seem to have a clear winner again, uh, which is the first one. Opportunities and challenges of financing cybersecurity and cyber resilience in developing countries through different sources. I have to admit, you know, misusing my moderator role that I'm really excited to see this because here we are and several speakers have, uh, have mentioned it. This conference outcome need to be practical, need to lead to some action. And this is always the elephant in the room uh, that uh, is not talked uh, about enough uh, about the financing. So, um, so that's, uh, that's, that's really great to see <laughs> from my point of view. Uh, Chris, uh, what about uh, your interpretation of what we are seeing on the screen? Sorry, we have it very tiny, yeah. you know, for us. So <laughs> we need to have some backup. No, I, I, I too, uh, you know, I, I think, that, look, this is a real practical problem. And, and that's something we've seen again and again is uh, financing is a big issue. So uh, it's not surprising. I mean, all of these are, are important issues, but financing certainly is a threshold one to get anything else done. So understood. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, any comments on this actually in the room? Uh, any experience? Uh, to be shared uh, by those of you here about, you know, actually always um, ending at the money uh, question <laughs> for uh, for the many initiatives that your organizations are involved in. Yes, uh, Teresa. Yes, please. If I may. Mm. Yes, as a, as a moderator, online moderator. So we have a bunch of people here who are good listeners, um, and um, um, so I expect also some. Uh, I expect also some questions uh, during the next uh, 15 minutes. Uh, maybe I, I think if I look at it, at uh, the outcomes, I think uh, like Chris said, resources, that's that's a key topic uh, also for the conference. So it, it does make sense. And also skills development in general in capacity building is a big team. You, we also saw that the track A uh, that also came up. So I think that that makes sense uh, as well. I also see that Francesca, you have raised your hands. Do you want to add something? Yeah, and actually, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm indeed not, uh, let's say, not, not surprised by, by the winner, let's say, in the, in the, in this specific session. Um, I just want to mention that, um, especially because we want to have um, an open call uh, on, on this topic, uh, also to consider not only, I mean, uh, the, um, the, the need for resources, but also the innovative way that we can think about which are the solutions uh, that either we've seen that is, I mean, that are working or also that we can think together about proposing how to involve uh, different donors, for example, in this uh, sector, um, how to go um, about basically joining forces 
for better using the resources that are already available. So I just wanted to mention these uh, two aspects that I think are also relevant um, under uh, this topic. So um, donors kind of like differentiate and, and differentiation and the diversification and also the uh, potential, I mean, uh, uh, joint forces when it comes to um, uh, resources uh, in terms of uh, uh, funding cyber capacity building initiatives. Thank you very much, uh, both of you, David uh, and Francesca. Point taken. Uh, we, uh, this, this will be important uh, at the conference. Uh, and if the, if the GFC, uh, and through its facilitating role, can humbly contribute to more mobilization of donors, this will be an uh, excellent, uh, excellent uh, achievement. Uh, just for your information, the weakest, uh, kind of, or lowest uh, points <laughs> were uh, given to the best practices for establishing national sea search and protecting CNI. Yes, it's probably quite a zoomed in topic. Wouldn't mean that it's uh, it's not important enough, uh, but uh, but yes, probably um, competing with the other more, uh, bro let's say broader topics uh, was tough uh, for this one. Let's go to the last question in the Mentimeter, uh, if you wish, uh, which uh, where I will give you a little bit more time because it's an open-ended question. You don't need to write a novel, uh, but uh, you can write us a few few bullets in few words, your point on uh, using global public goods for uh, cyber uh, capacity building. Uh, I'm not interpreting the question on purpose. Uh, take it as you wish uh, to interpret it and feel free to share with us a few words uh, that as you type uh, should be appearing on the screen. And I will then ask uh, Dr. Tovella uh, to comment uh, if possible once we get the uh, answers uh, flowing in. So whoever is the fastest typer will appear first. <laughs> okay, it's coming in. Let's wait a few more seconds. Thank you for those who have shared their inputs. And of course, both online on-site participants are welcome to be with us and shape this discussion. And there are already quite a few to pick from, but let's wait a little bit more. And for your information, we have about 12 minutes left uh, for this session. And if any time any of you would then like to elaborate on your brief points uh, a little bit more, you know that the opportunity is there. Okay, so uh, let me just uh, uh, share with you those that uh, we can see already. Um, twice I can see the word definition. Yeah, do we need a definition to set the stage for this track, to have a common understanding? Another input was along the same lines. We need more definition. Uh, other inputs that we could see here is that the GFC and its civil portal, uh, I will talk about it maybe towards the end of the session, could support public goods globally. Okay, yes. Uh, global goods could also provide a repository to avoid uh, duplication of efforts. Involvement of develop development community into CCB. Thinking about mechanisms for sustainability of global public goods and more are in, and I cannot see because uh, I would need uh, you, dear colleagues, to scroll down. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm, okay. So uh, connotation between open uh, source uh, and public goods, handling risk for cyber attacks, common platforms, uh -huh, cybersecurity knowledge uh, uh, mentioned in connection uh, to, to global public goods. Excellent. Um, Dr. Tovella, as you're looking at the screen and some of the ideas coming in on this track, uh, do you have some observations to share, please? Um, thank you very much. It's a very interesting, I think, in terms of some of the comments that are coming through, in terms of, um, you know, especially when you look at issues of knowledge platforms, um, and but also I think very important, the idea of defining and being clear that we're all talking about the same thing. 
what I think then for me, you know, this also perhaps in some ways um, does tie into the last question and the outcome of the last question on resources, because yes, we may have and we may define global public goods and we may put these goods at the disposal of the community for cyber capacity building. But at the end of the day, someone has to pay for all these things. And, and it, so it will still come back to the question of sustainability of how we develop these um, these global public goods, but how do we also make sure that they are sustainable? So I think the point on resourcing and resources and innovative financing um, is something that we will still need to really tackle very deliberately if we are indeed going to be able to create and sustain um, global public goods to address the issues of cyber capacity building. Back to you. Thank you very much for this uh, for this quick interpretation of what we have been seeing coming in. You know, for your information, we have a track of uh, what you have uh, put in. Yeah, so we will definitely reflect it uh, in the discussions of quite a big team uh, that is uh, that is actually working uh, on putting uh, putting the conference uh, together. Now, uh, before we go to some practicalities, uh, such as where to find more information and similar, uh, Chris, if I can go back to you to kind of share with us what are the kind of immediate next steps in the process uh, of getting where we want to get in uh, connection to the conference. Yeah, I mean, one one obviously is to get input from all of you, which we're doing today, but, but we really would welcome uh, more substantive input. And like uh, Teresa said, and I said earlier, it can be by talking to us while we're here, sending emails, whatever, whatever, whatever you fancy will, will I think will help us. Uh, we are uh, working on uh, finalizing where exactly the conference will be and the timing of it. We'll communicate that through the community once those are set. Uh, we want to make sure it's the place that's accessible to people. We want to make sure that it uh, gives us time to get the right people there, et cetera, and get the planning done and do the consultations we're doing now. Uh, so there's a lot of moving pieces in that, as you might imagine. Uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be uh, communicating that, but we we plan to have a couple more uh, uh, engagement sessions and in, in various places that we have a chance. This is a big one, obviously, because a lot of the community is here. Uh, but you know, if you see us at any venue that we're at, and we often are at different venues around the world, uh, engage with us if you have ideas. We really want to hear them. <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, Chris. You know, practically speaking, uh, the best way to uh, stay in the loop uh, uh, of the uh, of the further uh, announcement and planning uh, is to actually um, go to the website of the conference. And as you can see, the branding is uh, is very cool and elegant and ready. Um, and there is a website for the conference: gc3b.org. Uh, uh, so that's obviously one source of information. Uh, the same um, email address uh, is actually uh, available. Uh, it's contact at gc3b.org. Uh, if I made a mistake, uh, my colleague uh, online, colleagues online, please uh, please correct me. Uh, and uh, uh, stay uh, tuned. Yes, to what's coming. Uh, if you are uh, part of the GFC community as a member or partner, uh, of course, uh, you will be kept in the loop as well uh, through the communication that we have with our community um, and obviously through the main website um, of the GFC, which is uh, the, the gfce.org. And uh, I would also like you to explore, uh, to talk to us about whether your organization uh, is maybe missing in the community and should be part of our community where we try to bring together actors active in cyber capacity building, uh, especially on the global level. But as was referred to um, earlier as well, we are zooming in to individual regions. We are actually in the process of setting up regional hubs. So even if your work is on the regional level, we definitely want to talk to you and engage with you. You can contact us at contact at uh, the gfc.org uh, or please talk to, uh, talk to any of us. Um, uh, of course, Chris, um, director of the GFC, uh, Mario, uh, Mario Bayan is with us as well, uh, or myself, catch us uh, uh, in the corridors, catch us after the session, uh, and we would be uh, very happy to exchange with you further. So in case there are no other questions uh, at this stage, I would like to thank you uh, for being here with us uh, or, or joining us uh, online and uh, enjoy the rest of the Internet Governance Forum. Thank you.